he told me he met Kelsey on the website and uh, met up with her and, and they talked and they went and had dinner a few times. What she did to Tom, it was not quick and it was not painless. It was basically torture of an elderly man. Dr. Thomas Kirk Birchard was born on February 16, 1948, in Boston. Following graduation from medical school, he continued his education to become a child psychiatrist. He then graduated from the University of Virginia Health Center's medical school in 1973. He then started his 40-year career as a doctor at Monterey Peninsula Community Hospital, before working at the Los Angeles Magic Castle. Birchard loved his job, and although he never had any of his own, he loved kids. After nearly four decades with Montage's behavioral health program, Birchard chose not to retire at 65 because he was unable to bear to leave his patients. Dr. Birchard was working three to four days a week, but he was enjoying life, after a very long and successful career. This old man was gifted with a unique sense of humor, and a big heart. In fact, he had made a lot of money, which was more than enough for him to show his benevolence to people. He particularly assisted single mothers and women who were destitute or turning to drugs or prostitution. As much as he could, he would try to support them so that they could start a new chapter in their lives. You know, he was very generous, obviously too generous. He spent less on himself, and lavishly on others. In fact, his ex-wife found it inappropriate that he had given thousands of dollars to online girls he'd met, so she filed for divorce, in 2001. And in early 2002, Birchard met, Judy Earp, while on a trip to Las Vegas. Soon after, she moved from Orange County to Salinas to live with him. Judy met the doctor through a friend, and since then, they have had a very healthy relationship. She was 12 years younger, but she had no problem moving in with her kids at the doctor's home. But sometime in 2017, Dr. Birch had met Kelsey Turner, a Playboy model, on the internet. And so soon, Turner became a pain in the tail for the doctor. These women were just like an escape for him to, to, to have somewhere to go. He told me he met Kelsey on the website and uh, met up with her and, and they talked and they went and had dinner a few times. Kelsey Turner was born in 1993, in Norfolk, Virginia, and grew up in Jonesboro, Arkansas. She completed her education at Arkansas State University, and later, she started fashion modeling as a lingerie and swimsuit model. Also known as Bad Barbie, she started her career in fashion modeling as a lingerie and swimsuit model. She worked with Maxim, Playboy, Players Magazine, Model Mania, and 110 Magazines. She has also appeared on the covers of 110 Magazine, Conceited Magazine, and Dream Vixens. Turner also appeared in movies like The Promise, and Wally Got Wasted. In 2021, Turner founded Bad Barbie, an apparel company, with a partner. But that was from the outside. On the inside, Bad Barbie had a tough life. She couldn't pay her bills. So when she met Dr. Birchard, who was many decades older, Nevertheless, she found him to be a father, a friend, a banker, and a problem solver. The doctor was kind to the single mom, from the moment they met in person. The soft-hearted old man, has previously provided such assistance to anyone in need. Judy, his girlfriend, knew about his behavior and his generosity, but she had no problem with him helping people. But Judy was more concerned about the doctor's relationship with Kelsey, as Judy claims that Birchard had given Turner many hundred thousand, over the past two years. About 300,000, that I know about, and possibly more. It took her a while to realize that, unlike all the other women the doctor had helped, this woman was hurting Birchard's pocket very much. He rented a place for $3,200 a month for Kelsey, and it was a fancy one. But Kelsey used the house for parties, and the police were called a few times. That's also when the doctor realized, Kelsey didn't seem to appreciate what she got. Even though Kelsey and Judy had never met, they pretty much hated each other. Judy used to refer to Kelsey as a white trash whore, and Kelsey already knew that Judy was putting pressure on the doctor to stop paying her rent. She even told Birchard once that his girlfriend was on the shitlist with her, and if she gets her evicted, she will kill her. 
but the doctor stopped paying Kelsey's rent anyway, in the summer of 2018, which was one of the main reasons she was kicked out. And at the end of the year, the model was renting a four-bedroom house in Paradise, Nevada. Kelsey shared the master bedroom on the top floor with her 27-year-old boyfriend, Logan Kennison. While Diana Payne's room, and Kelsey's son's room were on the second floor. And Jeremy Kennison, another roommate, slept on the bottom floor. Now, Pena hadn't known Turner for very long, in fact, she lived rent-free, mostly babysitting Kelsey's son. She also worked nights at Caesars Palace's Coliseum Theatre as a bartender. Even though life was not as good as it once was with the doctor. Obviously, Birchard was still in contact, and was even helping here and there, but Kelsey was still living a life that she could never afford. That person had made threats, lots of threats to him, to me. Obviously, she carried them out. Even when Kelsey threatened the doctor with taking him to the police with information about child molestation, he was still helping her. Even though there were a lot of sugar daddy accusations around the doctor's life, pedophilia was never one of them. Even though she threatened, the doctor paid for her to move to Las Vegas with her four-year-old son. Kelsey just moved in a few months ago, and she's broke. The woman contacted the doctor again, and informed him that she was sick and that her boyfriend was physically abusing her. He says, seems that Kelsey's having some trouble with her boyfriend out there in Vegas. Um, he's hitting her, he's um, abusing her, and she has no money, nowhere to go, and I feel partly responsible for this. Birchard and Judy were already in Las Vegas in late February for a conference, but he did not see Kelsey. But on March 1st, Birchard decided to fly to Vegas to see if Kelsey was indeed telling the truth. Since she had this sad story that, you know, she'd be homeless with her children on the street, my whole world's been turned upside down. Now, Birchard's girlfriend of 17 years did not know that Birchard had returned to the city. But he texted her, saying he would be home in a few days, and that he wanted to see what was going on all by himself. In the next couple of days, she also received some texts, but it did not seem like Birchard, until the phone was turned completely off. I warned him on Saturday, when he was there, that, you know, maybe you ought not wait till Monday to come home. Maybe you ought to just come home on the next flight. Dr. Birchard wanted to solve Kelsey's problems and fights, as he always does, but Kelsey herself was fighting with him. As soon as Birchard got home, he paid the rent for Kelsey. On March 2nd, Kennison's girlfriend showed up at Birchard's house and started chatting with him. Kelsey did not like what was happening. When the woman and Birchard were out together, she put it all on Kennison, accusing his girlfriend of stealing her daddy. After getting back to the house, Kennison and his girlfriend hopped in a taxi, while Kelsey and Birchard were fighting. Several hours later, Kelsey totally lost it, when she found nudes, of her mother on Birchard's phone. At that point, the doctor shut himself in her son's room, slamming the door behind him. Kennison was not pleased with that behavior from the old man. He came up running with a baseball bat in his hand. Taking the door off its hinges, he broke it in two. Moments later, Pena found Birchard covered in red and purple bruises. She took the bat from Kennison, who came downstairs with Kelsey, who told him to knock him out. Pena got Birchard a glass of water, and tried to clean him up. But the old man needs a hospital, not just cleaning, so he walked down to the garage, the old man climbed into Kelsey's Mercedes-Benz, and waited with Pena for someone to drive him. In the meantime, Pena tried to help, but Kelsey and Kennison wanted to clean up their mess, before they rushed to the hospital. While waiting for the deadly couple to come down, he told Pena he would never say anything at the hospital, he didn't want to get Kelsey or her boyfriend, in trouble. While he was bleeding, Kelsey and her boyfriend were still inside, planning not to take him to the hospital. When Kelsey finally came out to the garage, she told Pena to start cleaning upstairs, dirty clothes were everywhere, and blood was on a bed. Pena went up, but Birchard refused to go back inside the house. At that point, they're arguing about leaving, and Pena heard Kelsey tell Logan to knock Birchard out. Pena ran into the garage and came out, but it was too late at that point. 
Kennison walked up to her, soaked in blood. His arms, face, shirt, and pistol, were all covered in blood. Totally confused, Pena walked back to clean up, and the couple discussed what to do with the body. According to their cell phone recordings, Kelsey drove up I-15 in her blue Mercedes, then eastward on Highway 47. Around 12.38 a.m., she stopped near the highway, for over an hour. Then, at around 2 in the morning, Pena drove up into that same area. A few minutes later, Kelsey's and Pena's phones moved from the area. That night, Pena stayed at her boyfriend's house, along with Kelsey and her son. The next day, they returned to the house to clean up some more, then checked into Rio All Suites from March 4th until March 9th. She likely left on March 8th, and for the next few nights, they stayed at friends' houses. And another motel. At the time, Kelsey was working at the Coliseum, and she didn't show up for her shifts, nor did the doctor return home on Monday, as he had promised his girlfriend. I told him repeatedly that these are not, you know, the people, you, the kind of people you want to be associating with. The last time Judy heard from Birchard was on March 2nd via text message. So she reported him missing and told the dispatcher that she feared for his life. I believe that she killed him. As more time was going on by and he didn't make any contact with anybody, that, you know, something bad had really happened. And Patrol officers then conducted welfare checks on March 3rd, 4th, and 5th. But every time, officers couldn't contact or find Birchard or anyone at the house. On March 5th, officers couldn't get an answer at the unlocked front door and got in. There was nobody there, and cleaning supplies were spread throughout the house, which suggested the occupants were moving out. And according to the landlord, Kelsey rented the place in December of 2018, and her lease wasn't set to expire until June. The house was searched, and several items of evidence were recovered. There was also a damaged door in an upstairs bedroom. The door appeared to have been ripped from the hinges and broken into two pieces, with blood on both sides. Inside the garage were evidence of blood, shoe prints, cleaning supplies, and a cleanup. And on March 7, 2019, at approximately 9.30 a.m., the local police received a 911 call about a suspicious blue Mercedes parked in the desert area, off of State Route 147, in eastern Clark County. Officers were dispatched to the area, and located the car centered on a dirt berm on the side of the road. The vehicle was registered to Quan in San Francisco, and he did not report it stolen. There were several latex gloves on the right front passenger seat and evidence of a small fire. In the back seat, there was blood on the headrest, and the headliner had small holes or tears. Using the push-start ignition, officers started the car and opened the trunk, which was stuffed full of clothes and bedding. Detecting a foul smell, the officers moved the clothes, and saw something that looked like the dead body, of an older white male. The dead body, later identified as Thomas Birchard, was removed from the trunk, and the car was towed to the crime lab. There was a lot of evidence recovered, including latent prints, DNA swabs, blue latex gloves with blood on them, clothing with blood, and Birchard's vest. A matching blue and white striped bath towel, from her house, was also one of the items removed from the trunk of her car. The doctor was attacked while in the car, and the blood on his back seat proves it, however, it's unclear if the attack started inside or outside. Also, it looks like Birchard's body was put in the trunk through the passenger door. The what she did to Tom, it was not quick and it was not painless. It was basically torture of an elderly man. The next day, Birchard's autopsy showed that the doctor died from blunt force trauma to the head, and his manner of death was ruled a homicide. And on the same day, they got a search warrant, so they could track Turner's cell phone with real-time, pinpoint accuracy. The order also asked for historical data from February 7th to March 8th. On March 12th, a San Francisco police officer contacted the registered owner of the Mercedes to find out if they were involved. 
While Quan was in China, he told the detectives that Kelsey had the Mercedes in her possession since November of last year and showed them records of a transaction between his wife and Kelsey. He posted an ad on Craigslist for someone to take over his car payments, and in November 2017, Kesley contacted him and they arranged a sale. Kelsey paid $2,500 and signed a contract to take over the payments. But she had to pay Kwong $541 a month until the loan was repaid. More surprisingly, Kelsey never reported her Mercedes stolen, and she has not contacted law enforcement to explain what happened. So they have Payner's work badge, in Kelsey's car, and Kelsey's boyfriend, has fingerprints in the bloody car. So obviously, they wanted to talk to all the suspects. On March 15, an arrest warrant for the three was issued for the murder of Dr. Burchard. Kelsey Turner, was arrested on March 21 in Stockton, California, and charged with murder and conspiracy to commit murder. Pena turned herself in, a few days later, and Jeremy Kennison, was arrested on April 17 in Las Vegas. Whether she was part of the sin, or not, Pena decided to work with law enforcement, and the investigators. She told them everything they needed to know, and she pleaded guilty to being an accessory to murder. Her lawyer is expecting a few years of probation or prison, but for now, she is free to roam the streets. Kennison pleaded guilty to second-degree murder and plotting to kill in July 2022. He was given 18 to 45 years in prison. On November 9, 2022, Kelsey Turner pleaded guilty to second-degree murder, via an Alford plea, she doesn't admit guilt, but admits that sufficient evidence exists to convict her. However, the doctor's girlfriend does not believe the plea deal is enough of a penalty for Kelsey Turner, if she ends up serving only 10 years. She's already been there for three and a half years, and she'll get credit for that for another six years. She is now scheduled to be sentenced on January 10, 2023, and faces as low as 10 in prison. Ms. Kennison, um, how do you believe those two charges? Mr. Or, excuse me, Ms. Turner, I apologize. Are you Mr. Mr. Kennison? Not good. Are you all? According to a profile purporting to be Kelsey's on a website known as PrisonBells.com, she is currently incarcerated in Las Vegas for a murder that she did not commit. It states in the profile description that I am looking for pen pals and support during my trial and whatever time I may receive. I was a model before this happened, and I would like to get back into the business once I am released. Friday, I had to pick up Tom's ashes from the post office, and that just like, you know, really hit hard. You know, I had to cry for a half an hour before I could even drive home. And then to hear her, well, she can't ride the prison bus because she's pregnant. 